one nation, under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Um, there are two board members that are not here physically. Um, Ms. Schaefer is taking her daughter down to school and was not going to be able to get back in time. And Mr. Rodriguez has been here for a closed session and will be here for the beginning part of the meeting. He is in New Jersey. New Jersey. New, New, Jersey. York. New, York. New York. New York. New York. I knew it was Bronx. the Bronx, you're right, across from the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> so uh, he had been with us during closed session. He will be here with us for a few minutes um, in the beginning of the sessions. I'd like to um, report back what we talked about during closed session. Um, during the time, we talked about public employment, discipline, dismissal, release, and other items. We also talked about negotiations. We had a conference with the labor negotiator. We heard information concerning topics of negotiations, and we gave directions concerning the topics of negotiations. The board also discussed one student expulsion that we will be voting on later on in the uh, meeting. I'd like to have someone uh, approve the agenda, please. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Um, would you vote, please? I guess I'm going to have to do it all, so. so is there something I can help you with? Here? I don't know if we can reach it over there or not. Yeah, if you could take care of that. Sure. That'd be great. Um, does Mr. Rodriguez want to be able to vote? Is he on the line yet? He's not on the line. Okay. He's calling. He said he would be calling in five He's minutes. Calling me. Oh, okay. Are you supposed to be calling me, dude? He said he's calling in on 4108 and nobody's answering. Is that the right one? Oh, you're going to get me in trouble answering the cell phone during a meeting? 4108. 818-4108. Okay, thanks. That's what I told him. He's going to get me in trouble answering the cell phone. Absolutely. Okay, um, Ms. Crocker, you're the only one that hasn't voted. Well, I was waiting to see whether... Well, we can pass them on this one. Okay, uh, for some reason it's not doing it. Okay, let's reset and vote again. Oh, you're not... It's not, it's not clicking. You're not... Should we go by hands? Yep. Okay. It's not working. Let's cancel here. The light is on, but it's not. Um... I don't have you blocked out. I have Ms. Rodriguez, Mr. Rodriguez, Ms. Schaefer, and the student blocked out. You don't have the students, or Ms. Schaefer's. I can grab theirs, but then I would have the wrong name up there. I'm just wondering if they're mixed up. No. I guess we'll go by hand. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of approving the agenda, raise your hand, please. There are three votes: yes, um, zero against. Oh, those against. I guess it would be not here, and two are absent. Uh, Dr. Markin, would you like to uh, take the announcements? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you, Vice President Crocker, and thank you, Board. Um, a couple, um, oh wait, is that right? Okay. A uh, couple announcements. Um, I just want to remind the Board that last uh, week we had our management retreat at Ohlone College at the Newark campus. Uh, really wanted to say thank you to Dr. Gary Browning, the president of Ohlone and um, the Ohlone staff for opening up their gorgeous facility uh, to us for those two days. Uh, we all signed a uh, thank you card to Dr. Browning and her staff and we had um, what I think was a very, very good management retreat. I know, Ms. Crocker, you were able to be there on that Thursday morning. Um, and we had a great turnout. Oh, excuse me. He's there? OK. Um, and uh, we were really looking forward to a, uh, to a great year. Is it possible to put the slides up, Liz, for the projects? 
I wanted to just show the board and um, the community we put together a project list and uh, some of the scope of work and some of the things that have been um, put in place and you see them um, before you. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, absolutely CSEA and uh, also MOT and um, the custodial crew. They have been um, working extremely hard over the last few years. There has been um, some things that have been left undone and um, Elaine and her office and Tanya and CSEA have worked very, very hard at a, doing a multitude of things this summer. Um, really, really worked hard to help um, get our schools and um, up and ready to go at the beginning of the school year. If, is that, if you could go to the next one. Thank you. Um, you see, all of the schools are, are mentioned there. And of course, with still a week plus uh, in, for school starting, they are still working feverishly. And again, uh, I'd like to remind the board that our maintenance, an M our MOT department is one person. And, um, and so she has a crew that is um, obviously helping her. And they've been doing quite a few things. And I think there's one more page. Yes. Um, one of the big issues is the playground retrofit at Whiteford. Uh, we would, we're going to be doing a ribbon cutting for the playground for Excellent. our kids. And we'll be getting that information to the board and doing an official ribbon cutting so our kids at Whiteford can utilize uh, that facility. And, and as I said, they've been doing a phenomenal amount of, of work uh, throughout the summer and getting ready for school. And so we wanted to just bring that um, to the board and to the community. Thank you, Liz. Also, um, I'd like to mention that we had an, uh, or, a new staff orientation, and, and that is something uh, that's new for Newark Unified over the last few years. We had a new teacher orientation for 21 teachers today, and uh, the HR department put a, a great presentation together. They toured all of the um, different departments here in the district office, filled all of their paperwork out and all of those things. So we are, uh, we are also still hiring, even as we speak today. But at the orientation today, there were um, 21 uh, teachers that were present. Also, I would like to invite the board this Thursday morning. Uh, we will be having a um, back to school celebration that will be held in the Newark Memorial High School Commons. From 7.30 to 8, there will be some refreshments provided by our child nutrition department. And then um, CSEA, NTA, um, I, the board, uh, will be bringing a welcome and greeting to all of our staff. And I'll be making a brief presentation. I've also invited Avanzando, uh, the city, the uh, police department, our new SRO, so we are um, really excited to put together a strong beginning of the school year. And we believe that by getting everybody together and so that they can, you know, we can begin to not work in silos, either by departments or by schools or by teachers, but begin to work collectively together for student learning. We're very excited about that opportunity. And thanks to uh, Principal Marquez and the staff at Newark Memorial for helping to arrange some of their schedules to allow us to meet in the commons. The high school is an insanely busy place at the beginning of school, and they've been very, very gracious to work with us. That will be this Thursday, uh, 7.30, and the program will start at 8 o'clock sharp. Uh, Friday is a teacher and staff work day, Friday, August 24th, and of course our first student day will be Monday, August 27th. Um, I would also like to say the first football game is against Doherty High School in the Tri-Valley area. Um, it's a non-league non game on Friday, August 24th. And finally, what is, I, I think, the best news, and I know this is going to frustrate the board tremendously, 
but we have um, received some embargoed information on our API scores that um, I can only give you a, a, just a taste and a smattering of some of the, uh, we now have two more schools that ever surpassed the 800 barrier, which is extremely exciting. We had um, one of our PI schools uh, gain a tremendous amount of points to actually leapfrog into the 800 number, which we're now actually checking, Dr. Greenberg English is checking to see if we can apply for a distinguished school because they've made such phenomenal gains. We've made gains in several of our significant groups. Notice I didn't say subgroups. In our significant groups, we have uh, still some work to do, and we will be bringing that information to the board. A couple schools did see a decrease, but across the board, the district and um, virtually every one of our schools saw a significant increase. And so we are very excited once those are um, taken off the embargoed list. I don't know, Dr. Greenberg English, if there's anything else that I just don't want to get myself in trouble by saying too much. I'll leave that to you. Well, and these were <laughs> estimates, yes. too. And so it may be a month or more before we get the official results. Yes. But Typically, are the estimates, estimates are, ex are very, very close. And uh, very, very excited. And um, I don't know. I just want to say it all, but I can't. So the reason for for not being able to have the information before is because some districts? Well, what happens is they're embargoed until the state officially releases them, but we have a contract with an organization that, that I view actually my former district that they uh, crunch all of the numbers and, and produce a estimated API. And in my gosh, probably eight years working with this ORS organization, they have been either right on or one or two points Good. off there. They're amazingly accurate. That's why they're estimates until they officially get released. Good. But the official <clears throat> or the unofficial estimates are outstanding. Fantastic. I can say for last year, they were off on maybe two areas, but then uh, we actually had more points. We thought the district gained 10 points last year. We actually gained 12. So only two places so it was exactly. to our advantage and so that is um, my report to the board thank you very much thank you dr. Markham um, staff reports yes I will um, turn it over to Elaine Nielsen to introduce uh, introduce our guest up there we go okay I uh, yes I'm very pleased to um, Call on Janice Peters from KNN on our first bond sale of Measure G. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Janice Peters from KNN Public Finance, and I am here to report back to the board on the first uh, uh, measure of, or the first series of bonds to be issued from Measure G. So, with that to the highlight. Uh, so on July 17th, we priced seven or $15 million general obligation bonds. Uh, uh, the purpose of the bonds is to uh, replace HVAC units and current lighting for operational efficiencies in addition to um, technology improvements. Um, the bonds were 30 year, had a 30 year repayment term. Uh, the overall true interest costs, the overall interest costs for the 30 year bonds were 3.89%. That's what we call the um, a fantastic, fantastic sale. I think about my mortgage. I would love to have a 3.89 percent on that, but uh, hey, that so was we my line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was a fantastic sale, so um, we were very pleased with that. The underwriter was uh, E.J. De La Rosa. Uh, we sold current interest bonds, and the anticipated tax rate impact uh, is thirty-nine dollars per hundred thousand AV. So that's the highlights. Uh, the following pages have to do with uh, just kind of some background on the sale, uh, kind of the tone of the bond market. Uh, the two graphs that we see here are histories of a bond buyer 20 index. It's a kind of a representation of a 20-year municipal bond rate. And as you can see on the 20-year rate on the left, it's basically been trending down for 20 years. And if we were to look at it over 40 years, um, we would see it uh, at 
the lowest point that it's been in those 40 years. So the graph on the right is a one year kind of blow up of uh, the last year and it's bobbled around a little bit, but on the day of pricing, uh, granted the 20 year uh, rate wasn't at an all time low as of that date, but the 30 year was. So the day the district priced the bonds, the 30 year rate was incredibly low. Unfortunately, since then the um, bonds did come down or the interest rates did come down a little bit. That's what we see on the far right graph. Um, but since then, uh, we kind of saw interest rates come down a couple weeks and then they've actually increased over the past three weeks. So yeah, no, you hit it in a great, great yeah. place in the market mm -hmm. without a doubt. Um, as is part of the negotiated process, um, the bond pricing, uh, which is conducted with the underwriter, which is E.J. De La Rosa, uh, we are lucky enough to have uh, me Member Messinger and uh, President Rodriguez on the phone with us uh, the day before the bonds price. Uh, the underwriters on that day tend to give us a, a bit of a flavor for the tone of the bond market, and then we establish uh, interest rates or preliminary interest rates at that point at which the underwriter will go out to the bond market the next day and try to sell bonds at those rates. Next morning they went out, uh, they took orders uh, based on the orders, uh, which there was a good demand for the district's bonds, they were able to improve the interest rates by five basis points. Uh, almost across the board, the final maturity actually, they had a two basis point improvement um, on one of those bonds and then they actually had to uh, increase the interest rate one basis point for one of those bonds. Um, in the end, the district actually, the underwriter actually sold, bought 30% of the district's bonds. Um, they didn't find orders or investors for those, so the, the underwriter underwrote them. Uh, something we look at, comparable sales, is to see how the um, district's bonds priced compared to other sales in the market at the same time. We look at the uh, sales that are of a similar size and credit. Um, what we're looking at here is a spread to MMD. So it's, um, that's just a kind of an overall market index. So kind of the tighter the spread or the lower the number, uh, the better off uh, uh, the better off you are. Um, you can see Newark is red. Uh, we've compared them to six other districts that priced right around the same time. And the uh, right there it shows that we're kind of in the middle of some um, sales priced at a higher interest rate than us and others priced at a lower one. But if you consider the two that priced lower than Newark, uh, one of those Santa Barbara Elementary School District actually benefits from name recognition is what they call it in the bond market. Um, the other thing is uh, Liberty Union High School District has a higher rated and actually had a larger size of a bond. So they also got a slightly, uh, I wouldn't say better interest rates, their, their spread was uh, tighter. And uh, so the impact of the bond overall is that the district has $15 million to address uh, projects on its bond project list as put forth in the uh, Measure G ballot. And uh, the flip side of that is that debt service on those bonds will start in 2013. Um, and the tax rate we're expecting to be impacted uh, about $39. Um, that was the commitment to the voters and that's how we've structured the bonds. Ultimately, the tax rate will be uh, determined by fluctuations in AV, but that's, we have very conservative um, AV growth assumptions at this point. So. Um, we're looking good. <laughs> uh, so cost of issuance on this next slide, the ed, ed code requires that after bond sale, uh, cost information be provided to the public and to the board. Um, here we had estimated $150,000 in costs of issuance. Uh, this is a little bit different than the, and it's kind of um, regulated a little bit differently than uh, the underwriter's compensation. So that's why we've kind of separated that top row out. But the, uh, the cost of issuance we had expected to be around $150,000. Um, it looks like there's going to be at least $8,000 um, that won't be used for costs that goes back to the county or back to the school district uh, via the county uh, to the debt service fund to pay down debt service. Um, the reason that some of these numbers aren't finalized yet are because uh, we're still receiving invoices from FedEx or the, the copy um, 
place down the street to basically uh, add in to our reimbursable expenses. So that kind of concludes the um, sale result, results part of the presentation. I have two more slides on a potential refunding, but if you have any questions on the, the sale results, I can answer them now. I'm sorry, do we have any questions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, yeah, just that uh, in, in the contingency, the uh, any of the estimates that came in on the high side on, on the actual, is that deducted from the uh, contingencies? Is that where it comes from? Right. They actually came in a little bit under. So I think, oh, the one number that was um, higher right. was Bond mm -hmm. Council had uh, essentially miscalculated. They have a very complicated comp um, calculation to get to their fee, and the, the 36 thousand five hundred was a miscalculation uh, the contract you have with Jones Hall uh, the forty thousand is the correct calculation okay so the difference came out of the contingency is that correct yes that's okay right. okay Sorry. so um, uh, and those that you're still um, uh, the, the expenses that are still outstanding if those come in over that'll reduce the contingency if uh, when all said and done then the contingency is is it goes back to us, right? That's right. It goes yeah. back to you. It'll go um, to your debt service fund, okay. not to the district, not to the district general fund, but right. to the debt service fund to pay down the bonds. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. So Great. we're tracking pretty well then. Very oh, well, perfectly actually. yes. And and I know that uh, our reimbursables, we we say three thousand in case. I think we just create some cushion, but it, they tend to come in right around 2000 because we, for a lot of districts, we tend to order the same statistical reports and they tend to cost the same thing. So I'm guessing it'll come in around 2000, about 8000 or, or 9000 will end up back at the district. That's district a champagne well. for the great job you guys did for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were very pleased with the sale. Any okay, other? so the, the next, sorry, were there more questions? Go ahead. The next two pages have to do with a potential refunding. Um, uh, a refunding is essentially a refinancing. It's a bond terminology for a uh, refinancing, and much like you would a mortgage, uh, when interest rate rates are low, you can uh, refinance your debt to lower interest rates. Um, rates are now incredibly low, and um, on July 26, uh, uh, the district's underwriter, De La Rosa and Company, had sent the district um, a proposal to refund bonds for $1.7 million in savings. Uh, because taxpayers pay your debt service, that, that savings is to the, the taxpayers. But um, on that day, <laughs> that happened to be the low point in uh, interest rates of the recent past, and uh, since then, rates have come up over the last three weeks. So unfortunately, some of these numbers are no longer um, the actual savings that the district would be saving. But uh, we thought we'd introduce the concept to you right now. And uh, it's very much moves with the uh, bond market. When rates come low, uh, you know, refinancings come into the money. It's uh, something the district can kind of mull, mull over and think if it's uh, decide if it's a good idea for the district. And so the, the, the little twist with this particular refunding, the district has two bonds outstanding um, outside of the Series A bonds, uh, one of which is non-callable. That's the 1997 Series Ds. The other ones are the 2005 refunding bonds, and that's the uh, series that uh, the underwriters had proposed to refund. Well, the 2005 refunding had already been advanced refunded, and you're only allowed to do that once over the life of a bond. So the way to get around that is to issue a refunding with taxable rates as opposed to tax exempt rates. And it, it's just that rates are so low on the day that we pulled together this presentation and on the day that De La Rosa had sent you the proposal, uh, rates are so low that the district, it actually showed savings of $1.7 million. Oh. So um, the two things about having, uh, doing the refunding now, if rates do come down, to the levels they were on the 26th. Uh, two things to consider. Because the call date on the bonds is two years from now. That's August 1st, 2024, 2014, excuse me. Um, if the district were to move forward on a refunding, you're essentially pulling the 
the proceeds from the refunding and letting it sit in a bank, not earning a lot of interest, and yet you're paying interest on those bonds. So there's a, a dis-savings associated with doing a refunding earlier than the called date. Still, you're going to eke out 1.4, or excuse me, 1.7 million in savings, but two years down the road, you could be actually eking out quite a bit more in savings. The other advantage of uh, doing a refunding two years down the road is you would have a tax exempt rate as opposed to a taxable rate. So it would be considerably lower in interest rate. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal that the, with the taxable rate and with this uh, negative arbitrage that you, the district could still have 1.7 million in savings. That just shows how low interest rates are. Um, but it's something to consider. So on the second page, I put together kind of different scenarios. And it basically says, you know, at today's tax exempt rate, which we can't do because we, this is just purely for um, purposes of illustration, um, at the tax exempt rate, if the district were to refund the 2005 refunding, we could look at 2.1 million in savings. Um, these are PV savings, sorry, the 1.7 I was referring to earlier, that's a future value savings. Mm -hmm. uh, these numbers are all present valued. So, um, so at a tax exempt rate, we would be looking at 2.1 million, but we're looking at taxable rates, they're higher rates, so now we're looking at 1.4 million. Um, it's quite sensitive if, the, as we just saw, the, uh, rates are up actually a little bit over 20 basis points over the last three weeks. Um, so the district has actually dropped below a million in savings, and a typical standard threshold for doing refundings is about 3% savings on your refunded bonds. That's kind of an industry benchmark. Um, if we were to wait two years from now, uh, you can see that with a tax exempt rate, uh, with no arbitrage, no negative arbitrage, with this lower tax exempt rate, the, at exactly the same interest rates as we are now, the district could say four and a half million. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of the catch, is we're seeing extremely low rates. To expect that two years from now is really hard to believe, but you know, it, could happen <laughs> because we've been saying that for so many years now, wow, this is the lowest we've seen, and yet we've watched it trail even lower. And, and the last line kind of shows that the even in 2014, the rates could increase 1.75% or 175 basis points um, from today's levels, and you could still have a million in savings and still hit that 3% threshold. So these are the things to, to kind of consider. If the, it, uh, A lot of districts look at it as bird in the hand. I, if I can save $1.7 million now, I should do it. It's, I'm going to save my taxpayers money. Um, if the district thinks that the rates are can be, could stay low for quite a while, um, then you can delay doing the refunding until the, uh, the bonds are technically callable. So... Um, I wanted to introduce this concept uh, that the district had received a proposal. I wanted to discuss it. Uh, unfortunately, this refunding is currently out of the money and it, um, below the 3% savings. It's be below a million in savings. But um, I'd be happy to come back and talk to you if uh, rates turn the other direction and head lower by 20 plus basis points over the next number of weeks. <coughs> so I don't know if you have any questions about uh, that. Ms. Here. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could sit and talk about this for hours. Yes. I think. Um, okay, so uh, first at, at a very high level, the savings we're talking about is uh, actually reduced <coughs> tax burdens to the community. To the magnitude, back when I was running the numbers, one point, the 1 1.7 million translated to about $4 okay. per 100,000 okay. AV. So, um, but so it's really not savings for the district; it's savings for our taxpayers. That's exactly right. Okay. Um, uh, now, uh, this the three percent threshold that you're talking about. That's based on, I assume, a certain interest rate. And if the interest rate dances around that, we get a little bit more, a little bit less. <coughs> Is there a certain trigger rate that, for example, the uh, interest rate? dips to a certain rate like it was before that 
it makes sense for us to pull the trigger right then and there? I mean, should we? And that's exactly why we introduced the concept early and we tend to kind of queue up for these things and then you kind of sit back and wait <laughs> because you're waiting for a great day in the market and then that's when you jump in. Um, so the, you know, the 3% is, uh, say $3, um, $3 uh, million on a $100 million par outstanding, if you were to save $3 million of that, that's your 3% threshold. So whatever combination of interest rates kind of gets you there, uh, that's an interest industry benchmark because um, we tend to look at it as, at anything less than that. It's not um, kind of savings enough or worth going through the process of necessarily doing the transaction. Yeah, because there's costs associated with exactly. doing it. Exactly. Yeah. And th these are all net of costs. That okay. 1.7 is purely to the district. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. That was my next question. Yeah. Okay. I should have uh, footnoted that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's no, no, no that, that's fine. So, okay, so then what we should be doing then as a district is is lining this up and then sit, mm, I guess, basically like we talked about before, and uh, doing word problems every day until it comes out to it's a really good... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a really good uh, deal, and then pull the trigger then. Right, and that's a, that's our job completely. So we, we're going to be watching, especially, we always watch the district's bonds, but it's this actually using a taxable scale on tax-exempt bonds. It's kind of a new twist or new technique. So uh, this has come up a lot recently because rates are so low, but in general, we are always watching the district's <laughs> bonds to see if we can refund them. Um, for the most part, we didn't. We weren't thinking of refunding the district's bonds because one one was non-callable and the mm -hmm. other one had it already been advance refunded. We thought we had to wait till August 1st, 2014. But um, rates just happened to hit such a low point that there was um, it became economical to use a taxable scale and possibly move forward with it. So we'll be doing we'll be doing the um, monitoring of the interest rates. Uh, we run the numbers all the time. We we're talking to the underwriters all the time to see uh, what interest rates they're seeing in the market right then. We uh, put that into our kind of our bond structuring software, and then we kind of spit out reports that tell us is it over the three percent? What does this seem worth doing? Um, another threshold that districts tend to look at is um, if you have too small of a deal, 3% could easily be $200,000, and then if you have $200,000 in costs of issuance and you're only saving the district $200,000, it doesn't seem worth it. You don't want to pay the suits $200,000 to save the district $200,000. So a minimum there tends to be at least $500,000 and 3% um, as a percentage of refunded bonds. The interesting thing here is you know, the, our community, you know, will pay a certain amount of money. But on the other hand, if we pull this deal right, they'll actually pay less. Exactly. So their interest, or their, the, the debt service on the bonds will come down, so the tax rate will come down. Um, a, a couple of questions, if I could, on this. We have issued $15 million in bonds of the 63 possible. So the rate we have is just on that 15 million, is that correct? That's right. What's the total payout? I'm not sure what the term you use for the use of that money over the 30 years. Um, so the... The total cost to the taxpayers. Oh, it's a debt service on the bonds, as we have it structured, was about 28 million. So um, of the 28 million, the taxpayers will be paying back, 15 million of that is for the district in their building fund, and then the other right. part so is 20, interest. Right, so 28 million? Yeah. Okay, so, so it's just about twice, okay. A little bit less than okay. two to one. And, and that's why you want your mortgage over your house structured the way they structured this deal. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's, that's a good rate. Yes. Um, the other thing is that, that um, when, if we were to choose to refinance something, what's the time lag from the time we say go to the time you can plug in and get the rate? Well, because we had just issued the Series A, it's actually going to be very quick. We tend to tell districts it's um, roughly about uh, six weeks because there's so many ducks that have to get in a row and you have to produce the legal documentation and you have to mm -hmm. uh, go get a rating. Um, because that was all recently done, it could really happen within a matter of weeks. So, so we just need to get to the right interest rate environment and then we 
We're, we've already alerted all the parties that this is a possibility um, and that are you ready to act on this if we want to move forward, if the district wants to move forward. Mm -hmm. And everybody's alerted. Uh, we just kind of uh, want to get feedback from the district that it's in your that you're interested in it and that we need the bond market to get into the right place. When it's in the right place, we'll be sure to contact you. How many times can we refinance that? Once? So at a taxable rate, exactly, this, this will be it. Untaxable, um, non-taxable, right? Oh, at a non-taxable, Tax so at a non-taxable uh, rate, you can advance refund only once, um, but you can current, <laughs> it's gonna complicate, you can current refund as often as you want to. So if, um, but you tend to have call dates only every 10 years. So um, if you're at your 10 year call date, you can refund no problem. If you're doing it before your 10-year call date, you get one time, unless you use a taxable rate. Gotcha. So for this, the district's bonds go out to 2025 for the issue that they want to refund. So this would be basically the last time that they would refund those bonds. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Um, I'm not sure whether we want to act on this or if we just want to think about it. And, and uh, there's nothing for us. There's nothing for us to act on this point except to let them know that anytime we can save money, we're up for it. Uh, we can agendize this uh, for a later meeting if uh, you so desire. But I'll be working with Janice and K and N to try to get the best advantage we can. Okay, so I think with your concept of what's a good time then we'll wait on that good well thank you very much Ms. Peters we appreciate okay thank, thank you all this much. information thank you, thank you. Thank you guys did and an amazing job yeah an amazing yeah, job seriously sitting on the pre-call and then the call and sitting through all the uh the explanations and uh, uh what a great team you guys and De La Rosa were and it really did a phenomenal job for us in our community really thank you very much uh, thank yeah. you Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have public hearings. Um, yeah, uh, Vice President Crocker, mm -hmm. we would, um, if you would gavel open the public hearing and if there are any comments on the public, public hearing. Public hearing and approval of resolutions 1891, impl implementing mm -hmm. school facilities right, fee right. statute. Right now, it's just the public it's hearing. It's just the public hearing. Just and the public then hearing. if there's no public comment, we gavel and then it will be on, con it's further on, on, consent. on consent. Okay, very good. Um, public hearing? Is open. Is open. Correct. Seeing none. Seeing none. Seeing none, we will close public, public hearings. Public hearing is closed. Okay. Great. Thank you. And now to the consent items. All right. To this, uh, public comments on non-agenda items. Is, has anything been gotten from the audience? Has anybody wanted to speak to the, the board on non-agenda items at this point? Okay. Then we will move on to consent agenda. Um, I move approval of um, personnel. Item A1. As revised. As revised. Good. Is Second. there, okay, is there any comments? No. Okay, let's vote. Would I you don't think. Do me a favor and hit. I, it works now. Well, you hit Miss Schaefer's, that's why. And where's mine then? Well. Oh, well, let's go here. There we go. Uh, okay, so I I'm guess. Going it, to, so I'm going to reset. Okay. Let's vote again. Okay, vote on. Personnel items A1. Yes, we're good. Oh, how come you're not this? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, the vote is three to zero to absent. How come you uh, only have four dots on here? No. It's only three. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a full, full, fully there. <laughs> okay, all right, we're good now. Okay, we're all set, very good. Um, personnel item A2. Of approval of item A2. I'll second that. Uh, let's vote on that, please. The vote is three to zero, two absent. Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Schaefer. Uh, Madam President, uh, yes. did, did you want to? Yeah, that would be great. I did, um, I think, introduce our. Dr. Markin would like to. Very good. Go yes. ahead. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you, Vice President Crocker. Um, the revised uh, PAL uh, approved 
Ms. Sakate Rosewood as the new assistant principal at Newark Junior High School. And we are very excited about the team that uh, Mr. Neal and Hikate will bring to the junior high. Um, I talked actually to two teachers today and they are unbelievably excited with um, the junior high and with Principal Neal and, and with Assistant Principal Hikate Rosewood. And I was wondering, Hikate, if you wouldn't mind coming to the podium. And, and uh, I know that we, we, we know you but um, not in this position. And so we are excited to have you at our junior high school. Thank you. I am really excited because today we had 500 seventh graders there <laughs> having web day and they were wild and crazy, um, but very positive and really excited. And it was great to see the eighth graders in leadership leading the web um, program and um, Tara Murray and Heather help me Ryan thank you um, did a phenomenal job of training the kids and getting them excited and it was really fun I am totally thrilled to learn about middle school because it's the one I have taught middle school and summer school and been a, a summer school principal but never been at the site on during the year and um, I love the age, and I think that it's a good fit with Mr. Neal, and um, I'm excited. Now, you also really have someone in the audience who like, we'd like you to introduce. Uh, I'd like to introduce my just past middle school, junior high <laughs> student, Zaria Rosewood is my daughter, and she's entering high school this year. So oh, she's been sorry. my, uh, she's my consultant that I'll be using um, to help me know how to make it through. So I'm really excited. I really appreciate the opportunity. And my goal was to get back closer to kids. And I'm there. Thank you very much for accepting it. And uh, we're looking forward to a great year. Me we too. just have one junior high, so we're all looking at you. I know that. Yeah. And this that's a new experience for me, too, to be in that kind of position. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you. And Zaria, thank you for being here. Keep moving on to non-consent, or excuse me, consent, non-personnel items. Um, B1. B1 through B14. Um, I would like to uh, pull B3. So B1 through B2 and B4 through B14. All right. Is there a second for that? I can I'll second, second that. that. Okay. B14. Who was the second? It was a tie. Do you want to pull anything? Um, B1 through... B14. For B1 and B2 no. and B4 through B14. Okay. And we had a motion, but I didn't hear the second because it was I'll a tie. Second. Okay, there you okay. go. Okay. Uh, we vote on that, please. Vote is 3 2 0 with two absents, Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Schaefer. Uh, Ms. Okay, I would Thanks. like to recuse myself from voting on B3, and I'd like to move, leave the room. I am a board member um, on Kidango, and even though this would not uh, affect me personally in terms of any remuneration, just to avoid any um, potential conflict of interest. We do have a problem, then we can't vote on it. We don't have a quorum. We don't have quorum. Well, then There's only three of us. Is then Ray not on the phone? No. Then he'll have to come back. You'll Can have you call him? He'll have to come back. <laughs> I think this will wait till next month. You don't think you could vote? I don't. I don't feel well, comfortable voting. We can wait till the fourth. Okay, that sounds fine. Then we will. Okay, um, so we'll table B, that. B three. We tabled it until next meeting. Um, I did have the the one question though. I was a little concerned about how low the rent was uh, for it. It seemed like uh, <clears throat> near near six thousand for five rooms for a year. It seemed. Based on, I know they're nonprofit, but based on their, do you want to actually leave when I discuss this, or do you want to? Well, I think we should wait till. Well, I. You can have staff maybe to do some research. For you, you know what? Uh, okay, I can. I can probably have the conversation later <coughs> about it. Okay, fair enough. Sounds Thank good. you. Okay, so that takes us to board comments. Board comments on consent item. Hearing none, we move on to employee organizations. Uh, do we have CSEA? Are you here? Thank you. Good 
Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Grenman, current president of CSCA Chapter 208. CSCA, otherwise known as classified, encompasses all support staff throughout the district. This covers anywhere from the classroom, library, kitchen, custodial, site office staff, district office, and the yard. As you can tell by that summary, we are everywhere. From July, through, July 29th through August 3rd, our chapter had three delegates sent to the annual CSCA conference. We worked on resolutions, heard from our leaders, and had inspirational speakers. One of our speakers was Governor Brown. As he went to the podium to speak, several of our delegates were so excited, they ran to the front of the room to take pictures. Governor Brown decided in turn to use his camera phone and take a picture of all of them to put on his Facebook page. <laughs> I'm told this picture did show up. In conference, we finally learned the proposition numbers for our two items on the ballot the CSCA has focused on. The Protect Schools and Public Safety Initiative is now known as Proposition 30. This is the initiative that, will bring, that brings in money for our schools that, if not passed, will probably devastate what is left of the public education in California. The second, known as Stop Special Interest Now initiative, is known as Proposition 32. This is the one that CSEA is standing against in the election. This is the proposition that prevents us from having money voluntarily taken from our paychecks as a payroll deduction and sent to our representatives at the state capitol who lobby for our interests. What are special interests of the educators in California? Our kids are the special interests we have. Why would someone want to take that right away and take away the power we have shown thus far to lobby for our kids? As Superintendent Markin said, our kids have no one to lobby for them, so we have to. CSCA employees are pulling together and preparing for the opening of school. Some of us are year-round employees and did work throughout the summer. Whether you worked all summer or did not, this is a time we are all getting schools ready for our children. Let's make this year a positive and productive one. Thank you, Ms. Grudman. Is there anyone from NTA it's here? Seeing none, anyone from NUMI? NUMA, excuse me, not NUMI. That's a car. <laughs> <laughs> See none, we'll move on. Um, Dr. Markham, anything in the old business? Yes, uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Vice President Crocker. Um, I would like to um, ask the board to consider um, a staffing allocation to provide staff with some flexibility as we get very near to the start of school. As the board remembers, last year uh, staff came to the board on two different occasions for increased FTE. Um, once early in the, in the late summer, mid-late summer, and then once actually on <clears throat> September 13th, probably a week to two weeks after school started. And it, obviously it created a level of angst. Um, it always does when it comes to staffing because it's not a perfect science. Um, the the Students don't come in in nice blocks of numbers, and they don't come in on June 1st. And so it is a moving target. But what we are asking is to try to mitigate as much as many issues as possible. And I think, and, and I would just have to say, having done staffing at a K-12 district for the last about 14 or 15 years, it is an arduous task. I, I remember as a high school principal being given uh, 13, 12 or 13 sections farther than two weeks into the school year. One English, two social studies, and I remember going to the board and saying, thanks, now how am I supposed to fill them? And it, it's a very difficult task, and yet you don't want to overstaff because that's equally as detrimental. We found last year that we did need the teachers, and so what we are um, asking the board to do is to consider um, giving staff up to four FTE if needed over these next few days to get school started with appropriate teachers, appropriately credentialed in the appropriate classrooms, understanding that it is a moving target every single day. Sometimes it's a moving target several times within the day. So that's what we would um, request. <clears throat> would, how would you like that formulated in terms of a motion? Um, I, th I think we would prefer um, that staff have up to but not to exceed for FTE. And of course, as we take a look at our numbers and staffing, uh, we obviously are 
uh, with Elaine in our midst, um, fiscally conservative and will not use anything that we don't absolutely need. Yeah. She's and gonna grab you by I, I, I know, I needn't say more. Mr. Um, Thomas? So, okay. Yes, that's it. Okay. Um, so, so some of our numbers are looking pretty good and we might we might need these as I understand it and if we don't need them we won't ha so we're just giving That's you a little bit of a hedge against uh, enrollment numbers that we don't know yet and and then coming to the board a day before school for example right. and saying oh my gosh and having to call a separate board meeting or or whatever the case may be this is just to be able to have the flexibility to make those decisions if we do in fact need to make those decisions mr. Mensinger okay so just to clarify things we are talking about old item business a budget modification process or correct okay because I just want to make sure we're talking okay. about which where we're doing this okay correct so um, we had I guess the going back a few months ago, mm -hmm. the board had said that we wanted staff to uh, make the decisions earlier than when you saw the whites of kids' mm -hmm. eyes, or there was, you know, children sitting in seats. And so this is this is, and we've been doing that all along. We've been making staffing moves, and so this is to again to ensure that when kids come to school that there's teachers there so this is an enrollment based and this is and this is just you know and you said up to four so it could be one two three Correct. or any percentage thereof up to not four. to exceed four not to exceed four exactly. okay so I'll, I'll make the motion to approve uh, staff staff's request of, of additional four up uh, additional and not to exceed four FTE is that close okay. Yes. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second that. Um, I'd just like to make a comment. It mm -hmm. would be very nice for everyone if every child has a teacher in the classroom that's going to be there for the year. And I think that that's one of the things that the, the parents get very upset about in terms of schools is the shifting around. And I understand the difficulty that you have in making that happen, but at least this will give you flexibility. Yeah, thank you. Oh, very good. Well, one of the good problems is there's more enrollment than we had projected. That's, oh, that's absolutely right. And that's, yep. you know, it's yep. a problem, but it's, you know, it, well, it's a difficult problem, but it's a good problem in that we, you know. We hope there's more the, enrollment. Yeah, but when, we, that's we, what we're, yeah, we're, you're right. We're right. crossing our fingers. Correct. There are indicators, right? Right. So Correct. let's. And you ahead. can move faster than we as a board can move. Yes. Yeah, Thank so, you. Very good. That's so I would like to call a question on that then, please. Um, do you vote, please? The vote is three yes, three aye, uh, zero no, and two absent, Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Schaefer. Uh, I guess that's all of our, we've got one last thing to do, and that's the expulsion. And then committee. Uh, we have an expulsion case number E, 1213-01. Move okay. to approve staff's recommendation. <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, would you vote, please? The vote is three aye, zero nay. Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Schaefer absent. Well, my goodness, we are fast. This is wonderful. You can be president all the time if you get something. Yeah. <laughs> You're so good. You're so good. Um, it's 8 o'clock. I don't think we've ever done that before. Oh, committee reports, announcements, and requests for the Board of Education. Uh, Ms. Thomas. Okay, I'd like to report that the audit committee meet, met today with our auditors, and the audit committee being Mr. Mensinger, myself, and uh, Daryl, who couldn't, Daryl uh, Miller, who couldn't make it, and uh, we had a couple action items coming out of that meeting, which uh, the board will will be hearing about hopefully in the next uh, meeting or two, uh, where we are going to be um, asking approval for some additional funds for um, our auditors to do training and uh, help us out with some. What was the term they used, Elaine? Um, for it, it's training yeah. some procedure help with with certain um, procedures so we will uh, 
we, they will be coming to staff with a proposal that then we um, we will hopefully uh, and they will bring forward for us to consider as a board won't be too expensive I think we think it'll be money well spent did you want to add anything mr. Mitzinger only that it's mandatory it'll be mandatory training oh the, yeah we want Good. this training to be mandatory for all principals and um, office managers and those that are dealing with ASB issues and um, so Superintendent, that means we had a discussion that has to come from the board through you to staff. No exceptions. That should not be a problem. Okay. <laughs> Didn't think so. Um, anything else, Ms. Thomas? No. Mr. Benz, again? Yeah, just a couple quick items. Uh, uh, there is a lot of work going on at our schools, and it's, it's very interesting to go see um, or very interesting to get woken up early in the morning by the work that gets started <laughs> at the school behind me. But it's it's fantastic to see the the things that are going on um, from you know sidewalks being repaired at Kennedy to uh, carpet torn up and cement laid down inside uh, hallways at Newark Memorial to you know just everything getting ready for school to start now. Uh, we have, you know, our classified folks working like crazy to get the rooms ready, to get the uh, stuff, you know, ready for kids. We have teachers in their classrooms. I mean, they're not getting paid, but they're there. Uh, they're getting ready for kids. Um, it's just, it's really, I, I find this part of the year so exciting because it's, you know, it's all about our kids. It's not about, you know, money. It's not about this. It's everyone wants it to, when the first smiling face shows up. Everything is ready to go. It's pristine. It's clean. It's you know, and everything's ready for them to, to begin their learning day. And I, I just love it. I love seeing it. And I just wanted to you know thank our staff, you know, all of our employees for for their hard work and, and this especially this part because a lot of this is crazy. Yeah. Changing rooms, changing assignments. Um, it's not easy. You know, and with all the, the budget constraints, there's been a lot of change, a lot of movement, but, you know, they're pulling together. And, it, and I, I just really appreciate it, and I think it's very, very, very exciting. Can, can I just add that I had the opportunity to go to several of our elementary schools this summer and uh, just was, as, as Mr. Mensinger said, was just uh, overwhelmed with the amount of work that our classified employees have accomplished this summer and uh, we re we're really grateful for that thank you yeah yeah especially with like I said with the budget constraints you know if we if you have tons and tons and tons of money things get done very easily but when you don't you know people have to be creative on how they do it and and it's it's very exciting to see all the progress uh, that, that's happening uh, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is and this the subject has come up a number of times uh, and, and the, the only place we can really discuss it is during a, during a meeting. But um, there's uh, scheduled on for the agenda for next, or talked about scheduled for the agenda for next September, or September 4th meeting, was interviews on the management uh, consultant for the uh, um, uh, yeah. construction manager. Yeah. Construction right. manager. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that um, while I have valuable input. I've already made that by reading their proposals. That bringing them in and having them pitch to the board is not necessarily in the best interest of the district because, frankly, none of us are, are have the expertise to pick that. That that really is staff. So I would rather see that if somebody from the board wants to be on the uh, on the committee to help choose that, that's fine, but I'd rather see it come the, the normal way through a recommendation from the board and not have... From, from the staff. From, sorry, from, the, from right. staff to the board and not have four hours or five hours worth of, or worth of proposal meetings in which, you know, we could effectively make a mistake when you guys have the expertise that sure, we I don't. Understand. Now, that's my own feeling. Is there any, any point or any... any time when the public could have their input. One of the advantages of doing it for the board meeting is the public has a chance to hear and to see make comments, and I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, the last thing I would say, suggest, thank you for, for saying that, the last thing I would suggest is when you get down to the, uh, to the one that you recommend, that we have yeah. them uh, um, oh, I see. do a presentation yeah. to the board. Just, you're, the, just, I agree with that. Just have, thank we you. should just have the, the um, 
your recommended firm make a, a presentation and then have it on the agenda for our, our approval. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else, Mr. Mensinger? Well, I, um, do you guys agree with that? I think. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's fine. fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I, too, had a chance to read through all of the documents, and I think that um, I'm certainly comfortable with you selecting them down to the one that would be. Okay. I've given you the input, as Mr. Mensinger has Great. and Mr. Thomas has, and so I think that's fine with me. Um, that was a long, a long <laughs> day. It was a long day, absolutely. A long, long day. day. But very interesting. Proposals. But very uh, interesting. Yeah, very absolutely. Good stuff. But, yeah. um, I wanted to um, thank again along with Mr. Mensing and Ms. Thomas, um, all the people that worked hard this summer. When I saw the list that we had gotten of all the things that were going to be accomplished this summer, I was just so delighted because it's the water fountains are one of my big thing and making sure that everyone has good, clean water. Uh, and oftentimes, you, water is good until it gets into the pipes before the fountain and then it becomes tainted with flavors and smells and things that make you not want to drink it. And I think we want to encourage children and they to drink water, and so therefore they must have a good source of it. And it upsets me that <clears throat> plastic bottles are something that kids have to have because they need to have water. So I'm delighted that we are working on that. Um, I do have one request, and I'm sure this is something that you're planning to do, but I wanted to make it known. I was looking back at the bulletin board in the back that Graham had put up, and he talked about the 52020 program during the summer for students, and I would love to hear from all the schools or from you or consolidation of what kind of summer interventions were happening and what the final results were. And it may not be happening in the first month or so, but um, you can you can see kids coming in. I know that Schilling has done something special. Uh, yes. um, and so I would love to see what's happening there, what's happening at the high school, great. in the middle school. So I would love to have that come back to us sure. sometime. Whenever you think it's appropriate, when you've got the information. Well, and, and I, I think it should be sooner rather than later if it gets into the new no, year. Uh, no, no, agree. Yeah, agree I mean, yeah. it should be early in the fall because that's when, you know, as soon as they get some of the results of uh, the early start of chilling and the 5 mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. going to get those as soon as the kids come back. I think that would make a lot of sense. Well, the staff also will know. Yes. I mean, exactly. they can look at their class and they have a good yeah. idea of the kids that are ready versus the ones that are, that's are a, going to have to be caught up. That's a great yeah. point. So, and you mentioned the that. early start. I'm sorry, I wanted to mention that too. That, you know, that is phenomenal. I, I think that that is something that's really good in our district, um, you know, Schilling started and had a few days of already of school in, in, in early August as an early start for, uh, you know, for some of our most needy students. And I think that that's just amazing that, number one, we got, mm -hmm. you know, teachers, everyone stepped up to do that. And that that's a phenomenal thing. That was a, I don't believe that's ever happened in our district before. Mm -hmm. At least I don't know yeah. if it did. And that's just, you know, once again, we're, we're doing some really, really outstanding things. And these are the kind of things that we, that the public should know. Yeah. Uh, any other comments well, or questions? Mr. I, Thomas? I guess I would like to um, say congratulations and how pleased I am that, that Member Crocker and Member Rodriguez uh, were unopposed for this current uh, election to the board and that we will be um, welcoming uh, Mr. Gary Stadler as a board member uh, come December. Congratulations, Tom. Yeah, Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Very thank good. You. Okay, good. Any other questions or comments? No. The meeting is adjourned. Wow. Very efficient. Am I good? I'll, I'll